Hi friends. Today I thought we'd do some bulbs and one of the reasons I chose this is I wanted to also share some A technique for leaving white space. I know all of you ask me about that a lot and have some real challenges with that, which I totally understand. And so of course you could use masking. Um, you could also do this technique that I'm going to show you, which is I just very lightly penciled in some of the shiny spots. So these are some bulbs and I used just a little uh, glass jar and made three bulbs. Um, and then I drew in some of the white spaces. And that way I don't have to leave them kind of organically with my paintbrush. And um, it'll help me kind of know where the placement is. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this wet, some of these areas wet. And I'm gonna probably go with, oh, I don't know, gold, green, and red. Those are kind of traditional holiday colors, right? And so I'm gonna go in with a very wet brush. Therefore, I'm using my uh, eight round Princeton Neptune. As you know, my Velvet Touch is my favorite, but because I'm going to do a really, really washy, watery um, effect, I'm going to go ahead and use this Princeton Neptune. It's much softer than the bristles of the uh, Velvet Touch and therefore it holds a lot more water. I'm also using my Artisto pad, um, which you know I love. These, This is the bigger one. This is the nine by 12. And I share this because uh, number one, I can't afford to paint on um, uh, arches, you know, every day for all my watercolors. So this is a great one and I have tried them all. I feel this is a little better than Canson and some of the others out there. It's pretty thick. I'm actually gonna take it off of here. Um, it's got a real great texture and I'm not gonna tape down my paper because I wanna be able to turn it. Uh, normally I might tape it down. And uh, so it's, it's a really great paper for student grade. And then I'm using my My Lang paints again. I love my Winsor Newtons, but can't afford to paint with them every day. And this is such a great little vibrant palette, very creamy. You can refill the little wells with any tube paint if you like, but it really takes that, um, you know, for the beginner who doesn't know how to mix colors yet, it's really a great choice uh, because it has a lot of colors and also it's very reasonable. It's, I don't know, maybe $17. And then of course, make sure you have your well water, wash and rinse side. Always wanna make sure you're washing and rinsing the paint out of your brushes, um, especially when you're going from each different paint. And this is the meaded one, I love it. It's ceramic, really heavy duty, I love it. So let's get started. I'm gonna start, hopefully you can see some of these pencil lines I made for where the shiny parts are on the bulb. And I'm just gonna take this very, very soft. I very rarely use a um, the Neptune brush. It's just too soft for me. I, I enjoy the um, Velvet Touch, as if you follow me, you know. But I thought this is a painting that is going to be very watery and washy. Now, I'm not making puddles here. I'm just wetting the surface around where I drew those shiny parts. Now see, this is where, because the brush is so soft, I can't quite get that stiff point that I'd be able to get with my eight, which has a lot uh, stiffer point for me. So this kind of, when I go to use the point, it just bends a bit. And that's one of the reasons why I like my, my Princeton. So let's go in and uh, let's start off, we'll do that one, gold. Now I might go ahead and use my, um, you could really use some of the yellow ochre. And then I think I'll mix in the Mylang. I didn't pre-wet this 
but they've got, this is their bigger palette, by the way. It's the same as the small one, but they give you this whole row of metallics, which is really fun. As you know, I love my metallics. And I'm just gonna mix that with the gold. And then let's go in and just start laying down some paint. And because this was wet, it's really gonna have this nice washy look. Now again, for me, it's just a little bit of a challenge to get that nice point. And there may be some of you that, you know, the uh, Neptune brush really works well for you and you have no problem getting that point. Maybe just me, right? Use your error. So that's just very much personal preference. Now, a lot of this paper started drying drying but i'm painting around and actually i think i'll this white spot i left over here because i i actually want to make it darker so it kind of has a shadow hopefully you can see my drawing there we go and i'm gonna just plop in some of the darker colors here and there and let it kind of blend and flow because I think that's part of these Christmas ornaments. They have a very uneven uh, color pattern because there's light hitting it in different areas. Now, normally I might not um, leave this so much of a hard line. And let's actually go in with my aid and just lift some of that out so it's white. As you know, I do not like hard lines. There we go. So just to soften those a tiny bit. I'm gonna go back in while that is wet and just add in some more darker areas. And I'm using some kind of C strokes because this is a round bulb. So you wanna make sure your lines are going in the shape of the ball. So if I just did perfectly straight lines, it might look a little odd. And then we could even go in here and maybe tap in and lift a little bit some of those light spots out like that. But I really want to I'm going to switch over to my eight uh, velvet touch just because I want some of that uh, stiffness. And I'm going to go in with my brown. And you can use your um, burnt sienna, raw umber, whatever brown you really want to use. Just a deeper, darker brown. And just drop in to some of these areas. Maybe here I thought I'd make kind of a shadow. And I wanna keep this rather washy because it is a shiny surface. So you're not necessarily going to have the hard lines. Now I did leave that little white spot just to kind of show maybe where it's picking up some color from somewhere else. I'm adding some of my brown to my yellow ochre and just gonna go in and drop some in here and there. Again, making sure I'm going with 
the direction of the bulb. The little wet on wet. Like that. Yeah, I like that. Bulbs can be kind of tricky because they pick up so much reflection. Like actually this is gonna be a red bulb I'll do here. So this might even have a little bit of that red in it. Let's find our red here. Um, let's see, is this the red I wanna use? Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, let's try a little bit deeper red, more of a traditional red. Okay, so I will get just a little bit of that on my brush and I might even touch in with some of that red just to give the effect that it's kind of mirroring onto there. Now this one's gonna be green, so let's go ahead and go to that one because um, this is wet and I don't wanna work right next to each other. So I'm gonna go back and now that's why it's so important too to wash and rinse your brush really well because you don't wanna have the red paint on here and now I'm gonna pick up green because red and green are opposites. If they got mixed together, it would make mud. So let's just start laying down some green in here before it dries. I really want the sap green because I think that's more of a traditional holiday color. So I'm gonna try and pick this up if I can here, get it in my palette. There we go. Now this might have already started drawing. So see this washy look is really good for um, these bulbs because it gives that feeling of highlights coming in. And normally I would just, like I said, leave some of these white spaces as I'm painting, but I wanted to show you an easy way because I know a lot of you have some difficulty while you're painting to leave those white spaces. So draw them in until you get kind of used to that. And then you'll naturally start doing it on your own very organically and very intuitively, creating some dark spots. Now, this is our light side, this is our dark side. So that's why I'm filling that in more. Now let's see if we can go in on this red. I might just avoid that right there, but let's go ahead and get this wet. Don't necessarily want puddles, but I want it to be pretty wet because I wanna get this really washy look. So I'm gonna stop about right there. And then I'm not gonna to touch the green either. And now let's go in with our red. Just like we did the green. Now I've got an awful lot of water here, so that's why you see 
it kind of puddling and pulling up, which I normally wouldn't like. I'm actually going to pick some of that up. Soften that edge a bit. And then I'll go in here and just keep going. Now normally wait until that is dry. Oops, grab the wrong color. I keep grabbing the wrong color. They look kind of alike in the palette. Let's see if we could put that in there. I think this is their Carmine Red, which is a pretty, pretty true red. And I think it's almost like an alizarin crimson which a lot of people consider that the true red. So making sure that you're doing the shapes of the bulb. Again, so you're not doing diagonal brush strokes because your bulb isn't diagonal. And then let's just, this really I meant as a shadow a little bit over here. So I'm going to add in some shadow over there, and I quite like that. I feel like I want to go over this with maybe a glaze or something, and maybe even some dark browns for that shadowy feel. So this would be a glaze I'm going to do right now. I'm glazing over what was there. And I'll just soften that a bit. And you can keep this quite washy. So I do have some blooms going there, but I'm not gonna water, worry about that too much. Might even dab some of that up. Yeah, I quite like that. We'll add some shadows over here. So definitely try drawing in some of your, um, those white spaces, I think that'll really help. Let me grab some dark here. Maybe add some of that, some black to your red. Now, I don't want too much on my brush and I just have a feeling. So look at all that, that was in there. And sometimes, especially if you use uh, Payne's Gray, I'm running out of palette room here. It's going to turn purple because Payne's Gray has some blue in it and of course blue and red make purple and I'm trying to create just a shadow here now I really need this to dry so that I can add in some um, glazing so what I think I will do is let's do oh and I see I dripped here now I'm using an awful lot of water. Oops, and I just smeared my pencil marks. And this paper is doing pretty good. I've got a little bit of warping, but it's not bad because the Artisto paper is not 100% cotton, you guys, but it does very well. And I think writing in my um, little string, and I wrote words in there, I'm just gonna use a ballpoint pen. You could use a marker or whatever you want. I even have some gold markers. That would be really nice actually, but I'm gonna use black. And I made sure this obviously, it's just a good old ballpoint pen. 
but you would want to make sure whatever pin and you guys oh i'm gonna sneeze <laughs> i'm so sorry i know i'm a loud sneezer um it's whatever pen you use it is waterproof obviously i'm having a hard time because i can't set my hand down there we go and then i can go in when i'm done and erase the pencil under it now i am not a calligrapher you guys so you know, it's not perfect. Um, and then I think I will do the little um, thing up here. I've been doing them gold, but I think I'm gonna do silver. Let's see if I can maybe even use my mirror series that you've been seeing me use. I just love this. Oop. I didn't get this wet before either, so. Let's use a different one. I'm still getting used to which ones uh, really you can see more. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Hopefully you can see that. Let's use another one here. Uh, that one. Really pretty. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see that. So pretty. Okay. My water has been glittery for days, you guys. So let's go in and work on some of this a little bit. Um, let's see. We'll go in with our green and let's use our olive green, which is a little darker. And I'm even going to add some of my brown to it because I want a really dark olivey green for some of the highlights in here. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, shadows in here. So this is our shiny area. So I'm going to go in with this and do a glaze. Now, this is still a little damp. It's really cold weather here, and um, it's kind of hard to get my things to dry quickly. So there's kind of a shadow. Like that. And I might even go up alongside that with some of the original sap green and get it to spread just a tiny bit. Yeah, I quite like that. That looks nice. I like when it's washy like that, again, because this is a very smooth mirror type surface. Just wiping off my brush and I'll just pick up a little bit of that like so. So it's got that real fun washy type look. Just added in some dark there. There we go. Soften this up a bit. Yeah, I like that. Might go a tiny bit under here and there. And then I will soften up all of these lines. So just using a damp brush. There we go. 
And now let's go in and work with that red. Uh, boy, you guys, I guess I should have washed my palette, right? There we go. And I think I'll add, actually, I think I'm going to add a little green in there because that'll give it a nice shadowy effect. And then let's see, our shadows over here. So I'm going to flatten out my brush. And then I'm gonna soften all those edges. So I rinsed my brush and now I'm coming up to the edge there with some water. So this is a great um, kind of example of how this uh, Artisto paper behaves. You're really getting a good idea of it with a lot of water. It does pretty well. And then let's see, where did my red go right here? I'm gonna add a little bit more red into that. You can also just use a darker value if you wanna do that. So I'm using these curves to show the curves of the ball, the ornament, and then softening that line like that. And now I think I'll go in up here since I oop, got some, that's why it's important to rinse your brush too especially with those bright colors like reds and such. Because otherwise you will really carry over those, uh, where'd my red go? Keep losing it. If you're not rinsing your brush, you will just carry whatever that color was you were using into the next color that you pick up. There you go. Definitely want that white in there. And I think up at the top, I'll use that darker like that. I'm dipping into some of my ivory black to create that shadow. So it's all about these layers. And I think on these bulbs using those circular strokes really makes a big difference as well. Didn't really want to go full, full black there. There we go. And I think I quite like that. I might do a little bit more on this one and if this is dry, I'll go in with some of that red to put a little bit of a uh, reflection here, but I want it to be pretty washy. So let's see. Let's go in here and just do something like that. So you can see that that red is kind of reflecting onto there like that. And we could even go in here and do that, although that's still very wet, so I don't wanna do that. And yes, I noticed I don't have a string here, 
Um, I'll have to do that once it dries. But can you see the beautiful whites in here? How pretty that is. I really like that a lot. And let me hold this up. I'm gonna stand up here so you can see that shininess on those tops and how well this really looks shiny because we left those white spots and I drew those in to begin with. So no shame in that at all. That's going to teach you to um, start getting used to leaving some of those. Now I'm going to darken this bottom part a bit. So I'll grab my gold and my yellow ochre I was using and I'm going to just add, let's see, let's add in a little bit of brown to that as well. And create that shadow on the bottom. So this is a glaze again. Now this is a bit wet still. Something like that. This is where I just love, again, watercolors because you can layer these colors on top of each other and get all these beautiful mixes. Look at that. Let me, I gotta hop up here and take a look. Yeah, that is exactly what I was, what I was wanting. Now, I think I might just darken this side here, just a tiny bit, using the tip of my brush. And then I'll soften that with a damp brush just a bit to blend it. And it kind of gives that roundness. I'm gonna do the same thing on the edge of this with that dark green, just to show just the tip of my brush. And then I go in and wash and rinse my brush, dry it off, and just use the tip to soften that line. Ever so slightly. And darkening that just kind of gives it a little bit of roundness. really contributes to that a lot. So these are just layers on layers on layers. Now the gold one doesn't have quite as much in the way of layers, but that's okay. We can do a few more in here if we like. And then I'll Kind of soften those edges. Just picking up a little bit of that yellow ochre and a little bit of brown. There we go. Really contributes to that roundness. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so what I want to do is go into the these uh, little silver tops here. And again, I'm not going to do the string here because um, this is wet. But let me find a really, really fine liner that I can do some little lines. So this is my Degato brush. I could also use, and I think I actually will, because I just love using these. They're so pretty. Those Meaden brushes, the set of 10, you can get for under $20. And let's go in with a tiny bit of black. Now, as you know, I rarely use black. Very rarely, but I think in this case we could do that. And I'm just going to go around and create some little
like it looks like a little bit of a reflection there. Just soften that a tiny bit. I've already got that silver on there, which I love. Just going in with ever so small amount of paint on my tiny Meaden brush. And again, softening those lines. Let's do that one now. Very light pressure. There we go. Okay. And you could probably even go over a lot of these with this mirror if we really wanted to give it some sparkle. It's pretty, oh, see, it's still wet because of the cold weather here. So I don't know for sure if I want to, um, let's kind of try it. I don't want to ruin them. And we could just create some additional sparkle in there because I have been adding this sparkle to literally everything I paint. Yeah, that's pretty. It's kind of mixing with the, the paint a little. Just gives it a little extra something. And you know, normally I probably wouldn't use this sparkle so much, but I've been having so much fun. I just can't stand it, you guys. I've been adding it to everything because I love seeing how it reacts with the different paints and I love it over other colors. I think that's really pretty. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but look how pretty that is really gives it some extra shine and glean where it's not too much, but it's like, oh, I think I see a little bit of sparkle in there. Look at that. I'm really having fun. She was so nice to send those to me because I've really been having fun with them. There we go. Maybe add a little to that one. And then think of your own words you might want for your strings, your little ties. And see what you think about drawing in those white spaces and see if that helps you. And do, you know, draw it in very lightly. A really good technique is when you use pencil, you don't want to scrub and erase. Use these little, I've had this ball for literally 10 years. And you can go over like here, I'm going to go over this and roll over it and that will get rid of all of my pencil marks I used here without scrubbing my paper because especially if you're using cold press or even rough paper, it's going to have that texture on it and we want to preserve that texture because that's what gives us the beautiful effects. So I tend to, if I'm erasing on uh, my paper, I will use one of these. I just think it's so much gentler than a scrubbing eraser. So there we go, you guys. I hope that encouraged you. I mean, look at how beautiful those are. So remembering some of the techniques we went through, drawing in your white spaces so your eye kind of knows, okay, this is my shadow, this is my white space, my shine, and then using the curve brush strokes and doing wet and wet. So you've got wet water down first and then letting it dry after you put in your paint to that wet water and glazing over. Now I added the silver just for a special touch, but um, look how pretty that is. And I think it really gives that feeling of roundness. 
and no, you cannot most likely erase your pencil line. So draw lightly. You just want to reference for kind of to give your mind a idea of where you want those white spaces. So I think that's really beautiful. I think this also would be a beautiful card. And I hope you guys give it a try. You could even do some splatters around it. Um, if you like, I will give the link to this mob watercolors. So much fun. I cannot tell you how much fun I have had with these. I'm so grateful she shared a set with me. Um, I'm not affiliated with her. It's just something fun I did. And also remember, I will um, get the link for you on Amazon for that. Such a handy little tool so you don't rough up your paper. And I think that's it. All right, everybody, have fun with this. I think this is really a great little Christmas uh, card in the making. All right, have fun.